Yeah, so probably the most exciting thing is that we may be within six months of MDMA being approved for PTSD. So um, about a month ago, the FDA formally accepted the IND package, the application for um, MAPS or now Lycos, their public benefit corporation that they spun into, for um, for the MDMA for PTSD work. And so what that means is that they're not going to come back and say they want you know, more research that's going to cost millions of dollars. They're going to evaluate, make a decision based upon the data that has been brought to bear. And so they conducted two phase three clinical trials, which looked very good. So the research research have been, has been published and, you know, high, like a, conti a continuation of their previous research, high rates of remission, um, uh, clinically significant results, and so, uh, so you know, we have to wait for the FDA decision. We're, we're probably five months or so away from the FDA saying yes, you know, MDMA is approved for clinical use outside of you know clinical trials. Um, now there, there's going to likely be, you know, special rules, a REMS program, which is kind of FDA lingo for um, these special rules that uh, need to be applied when conducting a, a, an approved therapy. But um, uh, yeah, so that's probably going to see the expansion. You know, a lot of people are probably going to receive MDMA therapy, not nearly as many people who could could probably potentially benefit but at least compared to the people, you know, legally receiving that therapy now in these clinical trials, it's going to be, it's going to massively expand, relatively speaking. And then probably the other big thing in the field has been the, just the the move, movement forward in the work using psilocybin for depression. So, you know, the most important finding in the field was the largest study ever conducted with psilocybin, a 233 person. Um, study of psilocybin, two different doses, really three different doses, sort of a trivial dose, but compared to a moderate dose and then a relatively high dose for depression and consistent with previous findings, some pretty long-standing reductions in depression that were seen um, in a dose-dependent fashion, so with the best results seen with the highest dose. So, you know, th those were phase two results. So, um, Multiple sponsors are moving forward into phase three, which is the final phase that you need for potential FDA approval. So, you know, MDMA is likely to beat psilocybin to the punch in terms of clinical approval. But, you know, we may be, depending on phase three results, we may be within, you know, two or three years, maybe two on the optimistic side, but a few years away from approval of, of psilocybin for for PT, or I'm sorry, psilocybin for depression, major depressive disorder. Um, and and the work with addiction has continued. There was a large phase two, almost 100 person study of psilocybin for alcohol use disorder that was published that, that looked very promising um, with some biological verification of uh, in a subset of participants. Um, backing up reports with the substantial reduction of the number of days that people were drinking. This was in a placebo-controlled trial.